Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first session of the new Keller Williams Leadership Academy. I am very excited. Are you? Come off mute or just nod your head so I can feel your energy. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yes. Good. Good, good, this good. Awesome. All right, great. So I'm going to get started. I know we have uh, only an hour together, so I want to make sure that we end on time. And again, um, I'm going to ask you to go on mute unless you have something to share, and that should keep some of the background noise down too. Um, so I'm excited to launch this series with you. My goal is for us to meet once a month so that we can really look at the opportunities around leadership. And I think that we're going to learn from each other. I hope to teach you some fundamentals of leadership, but really give you tactical ways to grow your leadership. And leadership is something that will benefit all of us in a really profound way. And we'll get into that a little bit today. Um, I do want you to participate. I want this to be interactive as well. And so I'm gonna throw a question out there. And if you wanna come off mute um, and, and talk to me, that would be great. So the first question is, how do you recognize a leader? What is it about someone that makes you say they have leadership ability or you would, you would categorize them as a leader? They've created other leaders in their world. They've actually helped to create other leaders in their world. I love that. Great. What else? They have influence over others. They have influence over others, for sure. I think they exude confidence. They have a level of confidence. Okay, awesome. Thanks, they Bart. Stand, they stand respect. out, and they're doing something that you admire or that okay. you want. Yes. Lori, you were going to say something. Thanks, Amanda. That people respect and, and trust them. Yes, there's trust, respect. You're all so smart. This is good. Anybody else? Some of them take responsibility. They take 100% responsibility, probably for their own actions as much as anything happening around them, right? Correct. I think yeah. they, they step up and they you can see them uh, reaching out and, and assisting others around them without being asked to. They just do it. Love that. So my next question is, are you a leader? Do you see yourself as someone who fits all of those, who ch can check off all those boxes? And my goal is to help more and more of you see yourself as leaders and for you to really see the impact that your leadership will have, not only on other people, but on your own life. And so today, um, some of you might know, I'm a, um, a certified coach in a few different areas, one of them being with the John Maxwell Company. And if you know John Maxwell, he may be one of the um, most um, prolific speakers and writers on leadership. And what John Maxwell says about leadership is very simple. And if you're taking notes, I would write this down. Leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And so today I wanna to just you know, kind of kick into um, this topic. How do we become a person of influence? How do we become a person of influence? So do you remember a time when your parents um, in their infinite wisdom would, would try to guide you and they would um, maybe steer you towards or away certain friends in school? I know this might not be so politically correct today, right? But really, I mean, how many of you can say, yeah, sure, my, my mom and dad or mom or dad always tried to help me understand that, right? Why? Because they knew that those kids had influence, right? And so that has never changed. If we take a, a look around us, there are people and there are messages and there are companies and there are social groups and political groups that all have influence, yes? So we are susceptible to other people's influence. So then we know that other people would be influenced by us. So I think what Dulce said about leadership being um, uh, a leader, a good leader takes 100% responsibility. That's probably one of the first things that as, as a leader you want to own is that there are always people watching you and that whether you call yourself a leader or not, 
you have influence, you are a leader. As a real estate professional, you're a leader. And so, you know, my goal for, for having this uh, group every month, there's a couple of things. I think number one, I it's important for me to come from contribution. And I feel that my purpose is to help other people succeed at a high level. And I think that when our company has really amazing people like you owning their leadership, there's nothing that you can't do. You will be unstoppable. And I want that success for you. I want that for you, for you and your family. But I also know we all benefit from being around each other when we are focused on really being people of integrity and being people who support each other and the people around us. And I think that when we have, or we take the power uh, to be actionable, actionable about our influence, amazing things will happen. So how many of you want to be a part of a company like that, where you can create positive change and maybe opportunities show up because of it for you? How many of you would like to grow your business this year? Definitely. Okay. How many of you would like to earn more money this year? Sure. How many of you would like to do more business, more units? You know, maybe for those of you who are part of our staff, maybe you want future opportunities, right? Some of you who are uh, running your own agent business, maybe you want to participate in staff opportunities too, right? There could be unlimited possibilities. So when you set out for your goals every year, some of those questions probably come out in your thinking and in your goal setting, right? You know, how you want to increase your business, increase your revenue. How many of you actually set a goal around increasing your influence? Has anyone set a goal around that? Actually, so I actually I did. Can you and, talk about um, that, Brad? That's awesome. I, well, um, it's 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 like my bigger why, and why I'm doing this is to build towards something that I want to be an influencer about. And, and so I didn't think in terms of being an, an influencer doing this, this was like the road to doing that where, where I could influence. So I have to maybe make that more of a, like a daily thing, like an everyday thing. It, it seems like it's, it's over there a little bit for me, but yeah, no, I, I did. I was, yeah, I just don't want to get distracted from that, but why not incorporate that into this? Yeah, yeah, I think one of the goals I have for all of us today is to help you become more intentional, not only around your development, your personal development, but your leadership development for sure, right? And I think that those two things go hand in hand, because if you want to grow your influence as a leader, you have to look at how are you developing yourself personally, and if you are focused on personal development, which a lot of us are, then we have to know that because of that pursuit, right, of, of personal development, we're going to grow as leaders. And so those two things are really connected. And I think that one of the greatest skill sets that can help you to be successful, I know it's true for me, it has been true for me. Um, and one of the things that will help you break through to your next level is how well you develop your own leadership ability. And that's one of the reasons why I was excited to do this. So I, I intend to give you some things that you can use right away. So um, if you are taking notes, that's good. If you're not a note taker, I get it. I've recorded the session. So you'll be able to get a copy of this and take it back. Did someone have a question? Okay. Um, and so if, even if you're not such a note taker, I'm going to challenge you to just jot a few things down, even if it's just a key word here and there. All right. Because you will retain that information, I think, at a deeper level. Um, so another thing I'm going to say too, real quick, before we get into the um, material more, some of you are going to hear material that you've heard before, right? How many of you have ever gone to a class where you're like, I've heard that before, right? Mm -hmm. I have. Here's my challenge to you today. I want you to reframe your thinking. So as soon as you catch yourself saying, I've heard that before, I want you to ask yourself a different question. And the question is, how well do I do it? So if you've heard it before, assess pretty quickly. Okay, so I've heard it before. Do I, do I actually apply this? And how well am I doing it? Because that can give you a whole different perspective on what, what we're talking about today, because that may become uh, more actionable for you. Does that sound fair? Mm -hmm. Good. 
All right, so let's talk about influence. Right now, I want you to close your eyes for a sec, just taking a deep breath. And I want you to think about a person in your life who's had really great influence on you. Who is someone that's made a great impact on you, your development, who's allowed you or helped you to get from point A to point B faster, who taught you things that you were able to use in life and, and in business, and, and it really helped you to succeed. When you have that person in mind, just give me either your hand up or use one of the emojis, put something in the chat. Just let me know that you have a person in mind. Okay, I see some hands going up, some things in the chat. Good. So who was that person? Right now, use the chat and just put in the chat who the person was. Was it a mom, a dad, a sister, a brother, a teacher? Who was it? Just go in the chat right now and put down the name of someone who's helped you. I see an ex-boss, a teacher, my mom, kids, childhood friend, teacher, wife, friend, mom, teacher, father, significant other, mom, someone named Brenda specifically, okay. Business coach, coach, nice. Good. So it's funny when I ask, I've asked this question a lot. I see more things coming in. Um, more people choose to connect with someone from a family, like a family member, a friend, a teacher. It's interesting. We have a few people in here have put down like a former boss, but usually it's less. It's, it's not so much of, of the people that we've worked with. It's more around people who were teachers and parents and family members. I wonder why that is. What is it about your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your friend, your past teacher that maybe that came to mind before a coworker or a boss or a supervisor? Well, they're the people you spend the most time with. When Yeah. So when you spend the most time with them, Rebecca, what, what develops from that? Um... I, I want to say like, do like you kind of duplicate what what you say, right? So like my mom, I know I definitely say the same things my mom said when I, I was growing up to me, to my kids. So I, I, I guess we idolize them because they're our parents. Okay, that's fair. So I think what I'm going for is there's a different level of relationship. And the right? people, those people are the ones that you know that they're doing it because they care about you and not because they're a boss or someone who has to do it because that's their job. Okay, Vicki, you get the gold star right now because you just set me up for what we're gonna talk about next. <laughs> And, and you, like most people would, you know, that I think that's a natural way of thinking, right? So when you have a deep relationship with someone, it's clear and it's easier to feel that they care about you, yes? So here's the thing though, that I wanna put out to you as a group. Is that not something you can find in a coworker or a boss? It is. It is. But what, what has to develop is the relationship. So when we start talking about developing your leadership ability and we're talking about developing um, the ability to be a person of influence, I want you to know that this is about how you connect with people, how people connect with you, right? And it's about how you show up and show up as you care for that person, right? And so what that also means is that influence leadership has nothing to do with title. Leadership has nothing to do with title. So therefore it can be that you, you find that that teacher, parent, friend, sibling has had this huge impact on you, right? Because there was no positional title with any of those people. But the truth is that you can have that as well in the workplace or in a professional setting if we're willing to be vulnerable enough to connect with people, right? I think that we have to show that we care about their success. And if you think about the question I asked you in the beginning, right? What, what you know, how do, how do you identify a, a leader? How do you, when you see someone, how do you know they're a leader? I think one of the things that you said and one of the things that would come to mind is that they're able to show how much they care about people's success. 
right? They want you to win. So think about someone in your world right now, whether you talk to them every day or not, do they care about you? Do they, do they want you to win, right? That's a leader. Now, how do you show up as that person? How do you show up as someone who wants to see people win in every interaction that you have? Write that question down. How can I show people not only that I care about them, but that I want them to win in all the interactions that I have? So let's try something. Um, I hope that you all have some paper and pen in front of you. Get like a clean piece of paper or the back of a piece of paper and draw a big circle, like a big circle on the page. And what I'm asking you to draw is basically a compass. So just draw one line down from the top to the bottom and one line across and label. You've got uh, north, south, west, East, right? North on top, south on bottom, west on the left, east on the right. And make sure it's big enough because you might want to draw inside or, or right inside of your compass. Now I want you to place a dot right in the middle of your compass. <laughs> so you should have a big circle and right in the middle is this dot and that dot, I want you to call that self-leadership, self-leadership. You're right in the center because that's where it all begins, self-leadership. Here's a question, a lot of questions today. As a coach, I ask a lot of questions. Who's ever worked with me knows that's true, right? So here's the question. Would you follow you? That might take a little time to answer. You might wanna actually put some time aside to journal this. Would you follow you? Great question. What comes to mind when you ask that question? So what makes, what type of leader would you follow? And do you emulate those characteristics, right? Now, if you answered with a resounding yes, that's awesome. But if you answered with a no, then you're being honest and it's okay because that just shows that we have opportunity. We have something to work on, right? And so I think we always have something to work on. And sometimes the hardest part about that is recognizing what we have to work on in ourselves, right? But if we don't put the effort and the energy on us becoming the best person we possibly can be. And if we don't grow into the type of leader we would follow, then how much influence do we really have on other people? And if we don't have any influence on other people, then we can't call ourselves a leader. You see how that works? So that's why this is such an important con concept because here's the thing too, guys, if you can't lead yourself, you can't lead other people. It's just that simple. So we have to take a look at what areas do we need to grow in? What areas do we need to improve in? Many of you might have a personal growth plan. And if you don't, reach out to me. I'll help you with that. I'll give you a quick you know, explanation as to what that is. But basically, it's an intentional um, growth plan that will help you focus on different skill sets, um, that you want to learn to help you become the person that will achieve their goals, right? And so maybe it's a book you want to read, maybe it's a class you want to take. Being here could be a great part of your personal growth plan, right? And so that, that could be an opportunity. I think another opportunity is to just become more aware of, of how we show up, of the behavior, the energy we bring into anything, right? I mean, the first thing, honestly, is you have to show up. <laughs> I have people sometimes who tell me that leadership is their goal and they don't talk to a lot of people throughout the day and they don't leave their house too often. So you have to ask yourself, you know, if, you, if being a leader is important to you, how involved are you with other people? How are you actually like physically showing up? And so it starts with that. It could be getting more involved in committees through the market center. It could be getting more involved with community um, uh, uh, initiatives around you. It could be getting involved in your church. It could be getting involved in teaching a class in the market center, doing something for your clients. You know, there's a million ways that you can start to show up, but that's really where it starts. 
So <clears throat> we know as human beings, we have a lot of influence because if I was to walk into a room, well, I can do it right now. If I smile at you, what tends to happen? Barry, if I smile at you, what happens? I feel good and I smile back. Yeah, that's influence, guys. It starts with something that simple. See, you have the ability to influence in little ways and big ways. So now we start to show up, we start to smile, people connect, right? It's all about that connection. So let's go back to your compass for a second. And I want you to draw a line straight down from your dot where it starts with you. And I want you to draw that line down to the south, right? So from the dot down south. And, and you can write down outside of the circle at the bottom there, positional leadership, positional leadership. So John Maxwell talks about the five levels of leadership in his book, The Five Levels of Leadership. And positional leadership is the first level and it's the lowest level. I think, uh, you know, in, in the past, a lot of people have thought that that was important, right? Because you have a certain position, you're a leader and you command respect because of it. Well, the truth is a, a positional leader, someone who is a leader because of the title they've been given, really has not necessarily done anything to earn anyone's respect or for them to be influential, right? And so that's why we say it's the lowest level. So if you are following someone because they have a certain title, will you continue to follow that person should the title change? So for example, think about a time you worked for a boss and they had a lot of influence over you, right? During the nine to five working day. If that boss, if you saw that, that um, call come in at eight o'clock at night or on a Sunday, would you answer it? Do they have the same influence over you any other time? Or is it just someone that you choose or you feel you have to respect because of the position or title they have, right? That's positional leadership. What we're looking for is something much bigger. So let's go back to the compass. And now I want you to draw a line uh, going across from east to west, right across your compass, east to west. So that's what we call peer leadership. It goes across, peer leadership. Much stronger than positional leadership. Uh, why? Because it's really based on how you connect with the people around you. And it's not always because you feel like you have to, right? So there's this higher level of leadership that takes more influence to impact you. So right now I want you to think about your role as a realtor with your clients, with other like vendors, <clears throat> uh, with each other in the market center. Perhaps you are an ALC member or you're on a committee um, or you, you would like to be this year. How would you gauge or rate your ability to influence your peers? On a scale of one to five, just write it down in your notes. You know, is it is it a five? Is it a one? Where where do you rate yourself on your ability to influence others? And why? Why are you at that level on a scale of one to five? I'm wondering how many of you have thought about this before. So even in, in promoting this class to you, this workshop series, this you know, group each month, you know, if I was to take the time and go around to ask all of you, why are you here? What are you hoping to get out of it? How many of you were consciously thinking, I'd like to really improve the relationships with my peers. And I would like to you know, really develop my ability to influence and be influenced by my peers. And, and if you didn't think of that before now, that's fine. But now that I've got your attention on it, come off mute and tell me what would be the value of us increasing our ability to connect and influence each other as peers? What could come from that? Personal growth. In what way? Just interconnecting, uh, influencing, <laughs> using the word influencing, mm -hmm. Uh, each other. And when you come from a uh, sincerity mm -hmm. of wanting to connect and to share, uh, that makes a stronger connection. 
Mm -hmm. For sure. Thank you. Who else has um, some thoughts? Yeah. Hi, Robin. Hi. Um, for me, I think it's to be able to affect my community um, to gather understanding um, through culture and through different groups that being a leader, I'm able to influence others in the way they think about society and how we react to society. So yeah, that's one of the reasons why I see influence and leadership to be very important. Excellent, love that. Thank you. Who else wants to share? Vicki. How about, how about um, it brings a better feeling either into your workplace or um, just in general with other people. When you enter a room, you know that you have relationships with people and it makes everyone feel good. I mean, yeah. it feels good to be connected with people, especially now when there's so much disconnect. Yes, for sure. I love that. Here's the thing, you know, isn't it interesting that we are all independent contractors you're all running your own business. Yet this is one of the things that makes Keller Williams so wonderfully unique is the culture, right? That we would want to pursue the ability to connect and influence each other because you could all just go out there and do your thing, you know, be compliant and, and you know, work under a brokerage. Um, but yet we, we all are looking for ways to connect meaningfully with each other. And we have committees that, that create and develop our education calendar that talk about ways to support the community and, and fundraise. We have conversations that are empowering and maybe even challenging at times around equity. We talk about technology and how that's going to help not just one person, but everybody, right? So it's really interesting when you take a minute to recognize the environment that is available to all of us. And, and one thing that I hope comes from us meeting and having these conversations is that you'll wanna take advantage of it more and more, right? Because I think sometimes because it's so readily available, we may forget like just how fortunate we really are to be in an environment that fosters conversations and that fosters growth and opportunity and ways to connect and ways to really influence each other. And from that, what could happen? Right? How could our company change? How could we be changed? How could our communities, the world around us be changed too? So um, that, that is one thing that um, I, I think could be a real tangible um, you know, effect of having these conversations. Anybody else have any thoughts on this? Yeah. I wanna say, I mean, I totally agree with what you're saying and the culture of Keller Williams is really quite incredible. It's kind of, almost overwhelming in that it's like being a child going into a candy store yes. or a toy store and wanting everything can see and, you right. can only, and your parent tells you, you can only mm -hmm. choose one <laughs> and uh, which do you choose? So the main thing is to then, <laughs> yourself, to then figure out where do, you, where do you feel you're lacking to where you are providing something to help us grow and, and start following different paths to take us up and higher, better yeah. and And it starts with intention, right? It starts with like, I think this conversation can create, you know, the ability for you, for all of you to think about, okay, what areas do I want to grow in? Why is leadership important for me? What do I want to contribute to the world around me through my leadership? You know, what do I need to learn, right? All these questions start coming up and how you answer them is what makes the big difference. So I'm almost done with your compass. Let's go back to that for a minute. Now I want you to draw a line, <clears throat> excuse me, um, straight to the north, right? Up, up to the north. That's what we call leading up, right? So you can put that outside your compass, leading up. How do you influence another influencer? See, leadership is not a downward movement. Leadership is not a top-down activity. Leadership is like this. It's collaboration. And so you have the power to, to influence other leaders. You have the power to influence Rosemary, myself, anyone on the leadership team. 
you're the most important people in the company to us, right? So what activities are you engaging in to start to, to shape the other leaders around you? I think Rita said that when I asked, how do you recognize a powerful leader? She said they grow other leaders. And that is true. Uh, a really powerful leader grows other leaders, right? So we all have the, in, the ability to influence each other and our influence can go up, it can go across, it can go down. It's really about it moving all the way around your compass. So John Maxwell says, listen, if you don't have people following you, then you're not really a leader. You might just be on a walk, right? And yet, if we, are, if we are on this leadership journey, we're going to find other leaders on the way. So how do you connect with each other as leaders? What would you like to see happen in this company of leaders where you all get together and start creating positive change, where you start to influence not only people in our company, new, new agents, new members of our uh, company, but each other as well. Because what is it about? Leadership is about influence, but it's really about people. You gotta reach out. You have reach to show up, up, right? Show up. You have to show up. All right, so if influence is not about a position, if it's all about people, if it's not about title, what is it really when we start to pull this apart and we look at influence, right? And we all know we want to become a person of influence. What are some things that we need to do every day that will develop that, that ability? Because it, it is a skill set. Would you agree? Do you think it's a skill set to be an influencer? Absolutely, yes. Tell me more, Stephen. I think it comes from the heart. Um, I think true influencers care deeply about the success of other mm -hmm. people. So uh, I don't think that just, not everyone has that, you know? Some people are more selfish and internal. So to have that leadership ability, it's because you care about others. Yeah, and so I guess what, yeah, you're so right. And here's where I'm going with this, right? So if we need to show up, we have to then connect some of the dots from what we've been talking about in this first half hour. We have to exercise our influence. Because in, in exercising your influence, you'll become more influential. Yes? So what are the opportunities around you to show up? Communication, um, texting, emailing, calling. I love hearing someone's voice. Uh, and you get more of a, a connection. Uh, but also, too, putting yourself out there if you feel it, you know, as you said earlier, to get involved in the community, to get involved with your buyers, your sellers, uh, making them feel that where you are taking them is the right way. You're out there for their well-being. Yes. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions that you don't necessarily have to answer, but I, I mean, you, I want you to answer the question, but you don't have to share. The first question I'm going to ask you, if all this is really resonating with you, then how are you exercising your influence currently? Every one of you, I'm, I'm going to guess, has a social media platform or two. Okay, so let's go there first. How do you show up on social media? Do you use that as a platform to influence other people? Do you, do you care enough to know that that's a platform? Right, because th this is where, where it gets really interesting. And I think sometimes where the rubber meets the, the road. Again, everybody wants to be considered a leader, but very few actually show up as one. So you all have a platform. How do you use it? Not only to promote yourself and your business, but to really be a thought leader, to be an influencer, to come from contribution, right? How many of you are currently serving on the ALC? How many of you get invited to be on the ALC and you say, no, I'm too busy? How many of you are serving in a committee right now? I'm not judging. I'm just asking questions. I'm giving you an opportunity to take 
some inventory on this, right? How many of you have been asked to serve in your community or in your church? Now, listen, I get it. Sometimes we have to, to learn how to set our boundaries and, and say no. And I've said this many times, no is a complete sentence. And I, and I get that. But many of us don't say yes enough to opportunities to showcase our talent, to showcase our, our knowledge, to showcase our influence. And if we want to become better leaders and we want to become a person of influence, how will we do that if we don't exercise our ability to influence other people? If we stay back and we just close ourselves off to contributing to the world around us? Just putting it out there, my loves, just a question. Am I talking to anyone or you're all like, nah, I got that. I'm always giving. I'm always contributing. I'm always involved. Anna. Tell um, me. One of the things that happened to me very early in my career was mm -hmm. I got involved in a networking group, the Rockland Business Women's Network. And I really, I got pulled into a committee. I didn't want to do it. I was very young and I was very, very self Centric. and if you're not I, speaking i'm going to ask you to go on mute for me guys thank you um and it was very very surprising to me when i finally raised my hand to volunteer for something and the the gifts that i got out of what i did in that volunteering which i thought you know i was i was young i had young children i thought i didn't really have time for this but i figured it out well, I can tell you this right now. Had I not raised my hand in 1998 for that opportunity, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking with you guys today. I believe you, Liz. I totally, totally agree. So I, I think you that's never, why you get I... more. You get more many, many times when you put yourself out there. Yes, 100%. And, you know, is it true that, you know, leaders are givers? Yes. And, and I'm not saying that... Um, I don't want you to be wise about where you put your time and energy, but I think that we have to get real, right? If we want to grow as leaders, if we want to grow our influence and we know all the positive things that come from that, I asked a little while ago, who wants to see their income grow? Who wants to close more deals? Who wants to expand their business? Who wants an opportunity to work with us, right? All these things. So, you know, I had a leader that I worked for, a uh, manager at the time. I thought she was a manager. It turns out she really was a leader. Uh, and she used to say to me this, she used to say, your work has to equal your want. So you can look at that in a few ways, but I think in the context of this conversation, then whatever we desire, our contributions have to match that. I think it's about contributing. And Liz is right. What you give comes back to you tenfold. The way that you learn and you grow comes back to you a hundredfold. And I think that those are all things we can look back on now, but yet do we continue the growth process and do we continue to seek out ways to exercise our ability to connect and influence other people, right? And do we recognize the platforms that we have available to us? Like I said, your social media platform is one. Your market center is another. Your database is a third, right? Your, your neighborhood, your church, whatever. I, we could go on. There's, there's a million different platforms right around you. How do you use some of them to really show up in a big way? And how does, does that start to impact the lives of other people? You know why I think some of you don't do this? I think for some of you, you don't think you have something powerful to say or to lend. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You all have amazing experiences, knowledge, skill set, character, right? That you could really be using to impact the lives of other people. It's like walking around with this big yummy tray of brownies, right? And, and never offering them. If I was to walk into your next team meeting that you have in the market center and I had this yummy, delicious tray of brownies and I never offered them to anyone, and I just walked around with it right here and ate them all by myself, what would you think of me besides the fact that I'm, have, I'm having a problem eating all the sugar? But you would probably think, wow, that's kind of rude. She didn't even offer us any. 
But the truth is that's an analogy for what you're doing with all your gifts and talents all the time. You're keeping it too close to the vest and you're not sharing it. Your gifts and your talents are not just for you, it's for the world. The world needs you to share your brownies because you have the ability to shape how other people think and you have the ability to help them grow. And, and really you have just amazing things to lend if you're willing to show up, okay? So um, I'm gonna read something that I, I jotted down for this. Um, sociologists have done research and they tell us that most people will influence 10,000 others in an average lifetime. The average person has the ability to influence 10,000 other people. Now you guys are in sales, you're in real estate. Imagine the ability you have to influence how many people, because you're not average, you're above average, right? So imagine what you could be doing to change the world around you. So whether you know it or not, people are watching you and people are influenced by you. Whether you want to acknowledge it or not, you are a leader and it has nothing to do with title. It has everything to do with who you are as a person. All right, so how do we increase our influence? Let's uh, kind of brainstorm on this a little bit. Uh, first of all, am I tracking with you guys? Has this been helpful? Has anyone had some kind of aha moment right now? Please put it in the chat. Either say, yes, I'm having ahas or tell me and each, tell us what your aha is right now. Okay, good. At least two people. You'll be back next month. Great. Four people. Awesome. <laughs> good stuff. Okay, good. All right, good, good, good. All right, so how do we how do we in, increase our influence? Let's brainstorm on this a little bit. I probably shared a few nuggets already. So I see someone wrote there, they wanna be more purposeful with their leadership. So this is good. This next part that we're gonna talk about, how do we exercise our influence? Let's come up with a couple ways, guys. Jump on, tell me how you can do that. Uh, Barry, you're muted if you're talking to me. I see your lips moving, so. <laughs> Still can't hear you. Can you hear Barry? There, I'm, I'm off. There you are. No, you got to uh, initiate, participate, communicate. Uh, put yourself out there mm -hmm. to at least initiate and get that going. And uh, if you see a need, reach out to try to help. Okay, so let's come up with some stuff, some tactical ways that we can really exercise our influence. I've mentioned a few things on this call, right? So who wants to get more information about one of the committees in your market center? Could that be a way you start to ex exercise your influence, right? Who wants to teach a class, right? What else? Tell me, give me some other ideas, guys, in your community, in your business, with your database, with the market center, with the staff. How can you exercise your leadership? I'm going to shout out to uh, one of our agents, Anna, and it's uh, Miss Jacqueline, something that she's done in our community that's shown her leadership. And um, I'll let Jacqueline tell you about it, but it's really making an impact in our whole region. So. Oh, I love this. Jacqueline, what are you doing? <clears throat> um, I started up a coat drive, like a winter. Well, it's more of like a winter items drive. And we've already collected, I think, eight 45 gallon bags of clothes. Wow. What, what uh, motivated you to start that? Honestly, I have to give her the credit. Rebecca told me I needed to find ways to get involved in the community. Um, so I started brainstorming and I talked to like my family and asked if they had any ideas, obviously trying to keep costs down in my business right now. Um, so that was kind of a free way to give back. Um, and so I got it up and running and I chose to involve because I couldn't do it without them a bunch of small businesses in town. So now they're getting the publicity of, you know, they've got a box there. People are coming in, seeing their uh, stores and restaurants and things like that. And with their help, we've been able to do so. That's beautiful. So here's one of the things I have in my notes when I, I knew I wanted to ask all of you this question about how can you increase your influence, right? So um, what I love about what Jacqueline came up with is, is this, she's adding value to people. Right. So if you're struggling right now to come up with some something specific, some idea, 
what I would recommend is that you start by asking, how do I add value to the people around me? How do I come from contribution? How do I take something that I believe in, something that I'm passionate about, something that uh, aligns with my goals and my own values, right? How can I work through that to find ways to connect, give back, and ultimately influence other people, right? So congratulations. That's really great stuff. I love it. And I just want to say one more thing, too, though. Yeah. With, it's got a, um, an expanded um, um, reach because now all these organizations that Jacqueline has connected with are seeing Keller Williams in a new light. They're seeing this yeah. young woman who's going around. And now people in those organizations are going to think Keller Williams and wow, what a cool company that is. So, yeah. you know, it, it just comes on a bunch of levels too with that. Yeah, which is what we talked about earlier in the call, right? That when you when you step into leadership, not only what you're giving, but what you're receiving, right? It's the boomerang. It's what I've called the boomerang effect of leadership right? And what is even sweeter about that is when your initial um, intention or motivation for doing anything um, is, is, let's say it's not about increasing your, your sales or your business, but it results in something like that too, right? Like it just creates this compound effect. And I think that's another reason why this is such a powerful conversation and why I think when we become more intentional about our leadership, our entire world starts to change. And it, it also, here's what happens, guys. It gives everyone around you permission to do the same. When you show up in a big way and you, or in a small way, it doesn't even have to be a really big way, but when you just show up, when you start to use your influence and you start to exercise your influence and you grow as a leader, you, the reason why powerful or effective leaders grow other leaders is because of the influence itself. It, we, as human beings, we model behavior, right? So you're giving other people around you the permission to show up as a leader too, right? And it just, it, it fosters creativity and motivation and it starts to have this amazing ripple effect. Right. But it starts by knowing that you want to see other people win. You want to help other people. You want to contribute. You want to connect with them. You want to add value. So if you want to do a little work on this, and that's what I'm going to encourage you in between these monthly sessions is to do, you, you know, to apply what you're hearing um, in your life and in your business. So you start moving the, the needle because otherwise you just spend an hour on another webinar, right? And that's not what I intend this to be for you. I want this to be more like a leadership lab. And so ask yourself the question, how do I add more value to people around me? Right? How do I add more value to people around me? Barry, do you want to say something? Yeah, uh, somebody wrote in there too, and I think it's what we've done is uh, one leadership is contagious. Thank you, Lori. And uh, also too, I mean, start small, start at home. Out where I live, I live in a tiny hamlet, but it's all volunteer. So there's tons to get involved in. You know, I'm on the planning board, I'm on the chamber, I'm on the arts alliance. You know, when you start increasing, you are part of town. So um, that definitely helps help yourself, help your community and uh, talk to the fire department, uh, uh, EMS systems, the library, the children's programs. They're all over. It's all here. Uh, just walk out your door and help your neighbor. I love it. And now, Lori, thank you. Leadership is contagious. Like I said, it creates that ripple effect. You know, when someone has, I'm just going to add this in there too. When someone has had a positive impact on you, do you share it with them? Do you give them that feedback? Do you thank them? Why do you think as, as a speaker, and it's not because we want this, we want to know we're adding value. So that's why when you, when you hear, you know, like when you're at a class or a workshop or something like this, we ask for ahas, we want your feedback because we want to know that what we intended as the value is, is being received, right? So share that when other people have made that kind of impact on you. Maybe you want to write a little note to that third grade teacher that you talked about in the chat earlier. Liz, I see your hand is up. There's this really great book. It's a super quick read. It's called The Power of Acknowledgement. Hmm. And it's by Judy Umless. 
and you put that in the chat yeah sure um and it's it's a it's a great great book but i'm gonna give a little story about this right okay so um i was at the grocery store and there was this kid at the deli that i really really liked all the time and the way he laid the cheese out for the cold cuts i mean how simple is this cheese with cold cuts right so one day i'm waiting he calls my number i go up i say to him i'm so happy that i got you i love the way you slice the cheese whatever and he you would have thought i handed this kid a million bucks because it's a simple compliment and he was acknowledged by this well he doesn't work at shop right anymore this was years ago but, i mean for the six months that he still worked at that store i would walk in you would think i was a freaking rock star because he was so excited to see me because i gave him something that made himself have worth and feel good so it's you anna i echo this sentiment wholeheartedly somebody does something good even if it's the smallest thing you don't know what's going on with them you could absolutely turn their day around and have a really big impact. And that's what leaders do as well. So yeah, anyway. for sure. Thank you, Liz. Here's the other reason why giving the feedback is powerful because leaders are human beings too. And you never know when that leader might be ready to give up and say, oh, what I'm doing doesn't make a difference. And then you give them that feedback and they say, oh, it does make a difference, right? All right, so I know that we're getting close to the end of the hour. So let me start to wrap this up for you guys. I wanna give you a little bit of a homework assignment. I know I've put a few questions out to you already, um, but I think this is really going to be a powerful exercise if you choose to make some time to do it. So I, if you really are serious about growing your influence, I'm gonna give you three questions to ask yourself every day for the next seven days. Okay, three questions to ask yourself every day for the next seven days. And I promise, I, I believe you're gonna be much more productive because of it. Who wants to be more productive? <laughs> okay, here we go, you ready? Here are your three questions. Number one, at the end of the day, what went right? Maybe I can get a volunteer to put this in the chat, please. All right, so you're gonna ask yourself at the end of every day, what went right? Number two, the next question, what went wrong? It's okay to ask yourself that in order to learn from it, right? Because here's the third question, what can I do differently? My team leaders hear me say this all the time, either we're winning or we're learning, right? So it's a healthy way for you to assess your effectiveness and your productivity every day, your effectiveness as an influencer, as a leader, as a, as a business person, right? What went right today? Now the next question, what went wrong today? What can I do differently because of it? If you do that every day for the next week, I promise you, you will start to become more productive. Okay. Because if we're not learning, we can't get better at anything, right? So it's really giving us an opportunity to, to look and assess. All right, so let's sum up a couple. What do we got here, Liz? Uh, you happen to still be on my screen. Fail often, fail fast, fail forward. Yes, yeah, probably Gary Keller, right, that said that? All right, so this, to wrap this up today, uh, and I'll give you guys time for your final thoughts, no matter who you are, or what position you have or you don't have, because I know that there's at least one person on this call to this as well. I don't have a staff. I don't work in a company. I, I work in my own business. You are still a leader, right? Because the number one person on the list to lead is you. Because if you can't lead yourself well, you can't expect to lead others well. We talked about leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. At the end of the day, influence is a powerful tool, but only if you use it right? The most expensive drill that sits in the basement can't help you build anything if you never pick it up and use it. Your influence is a tool that you have to pick up and use to build things around you. This is not about using any kind of power for personal gain, because what is leadership? It's about influence, and influence is about the other per person. So it's always about finding success through people. Mastering this, right, the art of influence is, is a skill as much as it is an art, 
and it has the power to change lives. It has the power to change lives. And I just find that it's just an honor. I have to say this. It's just really an honor for me to be in a company like Keller Williams, where I can raise my hand and say, I'm going to teach a class. I'm going to do it every month and let's see who wants to come, right? Um, because it gives me an opportunity to pursue what I'm passionate about. And it gives me an opportunity to stretch and use my influence and, and help all of you continue to grow on your journey and become, you know, better at what you're doing and grow your leadership. So, um, you know, personal growth is important to me and has been for a very long time. Um, and I think that that's the other thing that we connected with today is that we have to grow as individuals if we're, we really want to grow as leaders, right? So while we still have four or five minutes on the clock, um, give me some final thoughts. I would love to hear what you took away from this uh, and what you are going to be implementing in your world because of it. Use the chat or speak up. What was your one takeaway today? I think for it's um it's just such a reminder of how um, much responsibility leadership is. And that it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of responsibility, but the, at the end of the day, the, the payout is, is exponential compared to what the cost of your input is. I think, I feel like people, I see people all the time who have leadership skills and they don't step up. And sometimes I think it's that they're afraid of how powerful it could be if they do it right. So true. I hope that I've given some of you the opportunity to look at that and give yourselves permission to do it, to step into, you know, leading and contributing and sharing. And we, we all have so much value to add. Patty said being a leader is not telling people what to do, but supporting them to build their confidence and help them help themselves and others. Yeah, I love that. Love that. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? So I would love to hear from you um, as you process the information, as you answer some of the questions I put, put to you today, or you, you do that exercise for the next uh, week where you ask yourself at the end of every day, what went right, what went wrong, and what can I do differently, how that's impacting you. Um, I think we can all benefit from that. So throw it on OP updates. Let's keep the conversation open. And I would also love to hear from you what other topics around leadership you would like to talk about as the months uh, unfold. I have some other guest speakers I'm planning to bring in. Um, so I really look at this being a, a laboratory for leadership growth and development. And I'm excited to see what you decide to, to do because of whatever you're hearing here, right? Like, I hope this is an inspiration for you to start something, join something, expand your platform, create positive change around you, whatever it is. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing the tangible results from these conversations. All right, so if there's nothing else, I'll let you get on to the rest of your day. Thank you, Dulce, I appreciate you. Thank you uh, for that. And um, you know, let me know what you'd like to talk about next, everyone. Have an awesome day. Thank you. Take care.